Good morning. God bless you. Why don't we stand? Uh, let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise right now. Would you do that? Uh, amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go uh, into the house uh, of the Lord. I'm glad that all of you are here. We're going to go to the Lord today with some special needs. We want to take those to the Lord because I'm so thankful that we've got a healer. We've got a provider. We got a way maker. Uh, we've got a heavenly father who cares uh, about each and every one of us. And so I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. And first thing I want us to remember is our presidential election that is going to take place Tuesday. We definitely need God to intervene and we need God's will. I don't want man's will. I want God's will in that. Whatever candidate that may be, that's exactly who I want because God is in ultimate control. Uh, and he orders our steps and he guides our path. And that's what I'm asking him to do. So let's pray for our presidential election. Let's also remember Sister Kim Cook's sister in prayer. She is in very much need of a prayer. Let's remember our missionary uh, Sister uh, Abernathy in prayer that God would touch her, do a miracle in her life. There's many, many more that needs God to come down and touch you. I don't have time to give you an opportunity to name them by name. But if you have a need and would like to make it known, would you just raise your hand all over this house? Uh, and we're going to take those needs to the Lord. Let's go to him. Jesus, we come to you right now. Uh, God, this is not a time we just feel in the service. Uh, but I'm glad that we can cast our cares upon you. Uh, for God, you care for us. Uh, we know in your word you said you have given us power to heal the sick. Uh, now we speak healing into these lives. Uh, we speak a breakthrough into their spirits. Uh, we speak a breakthrough into their health right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever is plaguing them, whatever is troubling them right now, we declare your healing power. We pray over our presidential election. God, touch America. Bring America back to our knees. Let us return to being a nation under God. I pray right now, Lord, that you would intervene in our election and God, your will to be done done. Uh, I pray for our service this morning. Uh, I pray that we would walk into this house, uh, come into this place with praise uh, and worship uh, and aberration upon our hearts. Uh, I pray today, God, uh, that we would come seeking your face, uh, turning from our wicked ways, oh God, uh, letting our ears hear from you. Uh, I ask all of this uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and somebody say amen. I do want to remind you, we've got an exciting, incredible week uh, that is upon us. Uh, everybody say family weekend. Come on, everybody say family weekend. Make sure you go to the app. On the app is our sign-up sheets uh, for the different meals we will provide. Uh, Friday night we'll have dinner. Saturday we'll have lunch. Saturday night we'll have uh, supper. And so all of that is on the app. Uh, the different competitions that we will have, archery, as far as closest to the pin, uh, as far as cone horse, cone ho yeah, however you say that, yeah, cornhole will be taking place out there, but please go to the app and sign up. You can also pick up your shirt in the foyer after service if you haven't already done so. Uh, I do believe we've got a few extras, so if you didn't get one, they may just have bought your size, uh, and so you can pick that up after church. So please, please remember that. This Friday, everybody say food bank this Friday. Uh, our community has touched our church and asked us uh, if we would be the host of the food bank for the Sabine area. And so the first Friday of every month, we do a food bank here. Uh, and those that qualify for that food bank is able to come through uh, and get food. Uh, here's what we need. We need about 10 or 15 people from our local assembly that will help us. Uh, and it starts at 8.30. We'll have donuts. We'll have coffee for you. We'll have some juice for you. And then at 9 o'clock, it starts. Uh, and it takes about two, two and a half hours. We would love 
for all of you, as many as possible that could come and be a part of that food bank. It would just be a tremendous thing. It's a great avenue that we could touch people and just love on people. And that's what it's all about. It's loving God and loving people, right? Amen. So if you have your tithes, if you have your offerings, I know, I know God has blessed you. I know God has given unto you. I know he's giving you the abilities to work and to provide and talents. So here's what I want you to do right now. Would you grab your tithes? Would you grab your offering? And would you raise it to the heavens right now and repeat after me? God, I bring you my sacrifice. And I bring it to you with a heart of thankfulness. Come on, with a heart of thankfulness. Will you say it one more time? With a heart of thankfulness. We all know it's not a debt we owe, but it is certainly a seed we owe. Why don't you come out the right side and bring your tithes and offerings? firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground. As nations rise and fall, kingdoms once strong now shaken, we trust forever in your name, in the name of Jesus.
Great. 
God to show up in. You have a situation in your marriage, in your finances, in your emotions, in your spirit, that you need God to just call something to transition within you to where you can sing about how beautiful and wonderful and powerful He is and really mean it from the depths of your soul. Because when we turn our, our emotions into praise, there's nothing that He can't or won't do for you. When we are led by His Spirit and by faith and not by the things that we see in front of us and not by the, the, just the depression and the anxiety and the turmoil that's in this world right now, we can be so easily deceived by the enemy to believe that He's not really working on our behalf because this isn't happening this isn't happening or everything is just in chaos right now yeah. the enemy is trying to distract us from what God's trying to do by showing us all of these things that are going wrong in the world and that's where our attention seems to get turned to our focus seems to get turned to and then it becomes hard for us to praise and worship him from a true heart yeah. because we have so much baggage that we're holding on to right and instead of having faith that He is the true God, that He is a powerful God, that He is the most beautiful name that there is, and that He loves you more than you can even think or imagine, our praise becomes weak. But after Job lost every single thing that he lost, he felt all of the emotions. Right. He felt all of the pain. But instead of choosing to be led by his emotions, he fell and worshiped God instead. And what a slap in the face to the enemy that is. To no matter what we see or no matter what we feel, to know that we love God and God loves us. And so let's just give our praise wholeheartedly and truly to him. There's no door that he won't open or door that he won't shut. There's no lie he won't tear down. There's no deception that he won't make right. Yes. The, God loves us. Yes. And I think that we have a hard time really grasping that. But you can't be bad enough that he won't love you. Right. You can't run too far that he won't love you. Right. So I think we need to take a moment and let that saturate and penetrate our hearts and our spirits and our minds. Because we're about to sing this song that says he is jealous for me and he loves like a hurricane do we know what a hurricane is this year i believe we do he loves you more powerfully than any strongest hurricane that has ever blown across these lands and we're about to sing so i want as we're singing this song i really want you to just think about those words and instead of being led by all of the emotions of distractions that go on in your life, I want you to just focus right here in this moment on the words of these songs and try to let the presence of God just wash you and cleanse you, change you, strengthen you, because we can walk out of here with our heads lifted high because God Almighty loves us. So I ask you right now just to close your eyes, lift your hands and worship to Him, and let the words of this song penetrate your spirit today.
who have led us into that sanctuary of the Most High. Hallelujah. I wonder if you would just raise your hands right now. Would you just lift your voice unto him right now? Come on, would you just worship him from the bottom of your heart? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. My, I like what I feel right now. I like what I feel in the house of the Lord right now. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. They return to your seats. Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord today. I'm so delighted that each and every one of you are here this morning. As I was thinking this week, I thought I was going to have an easy week because I studied so hard last week for the message that I was going to deliver. And then I just felt like, well, I'll deliver it this Sunday. Well, the Lord decided something different Thursday, and so I had to go back to the drawing board. And uh, my title was this morning, uh, Walking with Faith. But when I got into my office this morning pretty early, uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, I don't want you to entitle it Walking with Faith. Uh, I want you to entitle it Walking in Faith. Everybody say, Walking in faith. In Matthew chapter 14, Jesus fed 5,000 men with two small loaves and five small fishes, taking into account the women and the children that were probably present that day. It could have ranged upwhere between 10 to 15 uh, to 20,000 people. Then immediately after this miracle, Jesus constrains his disciples uh, to get into the ship uh, and to go before him uh, unto the other side, uh, while the scripture says uh, he sent the multitude uh, away. And when he had sent the multitude away, the Bible says that he went up into a mountain and began to pray. And when the evening was come, the word says that he was all alone. But in Matthew chapter 14, the word says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, being tossed with winds and waves. Notice how the words Jesus said constrained his disciples to get into the ship, but the key word is to go to the other side. He didn't tell them to only go halfway and then drown, but he told them to get in the ship and go to the other side. This is so very, very important. These words about going to the other side, you have to understand this morning that they were spoken by the Creator. 
For Colossians tells us in the first chapter, in verse 16, for by him all things was created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. But look at this. All things were created by him and for him. Jesus is the one who spoke this very lake into existence. All of his words carry the same creative power. When the Lord says something, there is a purpose behind it. He never wastes his breath. He never, never speaks idle words. If the Lord has ever told you something, he means exactly what he says. Everything God says is significant. These disciples, though, didn't think about who it was that told them to go to the other side. And sometimes you and I fall into that same category because we say, God, there's no way. And God is saying, I'm a God who's able to make a way where there seemeth to be no way. I'm a God that specializes in impossibility. For John chapter 1, 1 verse 1 and verse 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. If you would read a little bit further down in this paragraph, uh, we find that Jesus was the Word. God spoke everything into existence, and he did it through Jesus, and the Lord upholds all things by the power of his word, Hebrews chapter 1 and 3. This entire world, you must get this today, this entire world is held together by the integrity of his word. And by him all things exist. Colossians 1, 17. God. God who created everything physical. Listen to me. Including the wind. Including the waves. Including the waters. We're about to encounter Jesus. Jesus was the present force, and he said, get in and go to the other side. Apparently, uh, the disciples didn't understand uh, who they were dealing with. The disciples had a glimpse of who Jesus was, but they were not keeping it foremost in their thoughts. Because if you look, Peter confessed a couple of chapters before, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He wasn't thinking like that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that they were shocked to see him walking on the water because their heart had been hardened. They hadn't considered. You see, they hadn't taken time to really meditate on the miracle that they had just seen. Sometimes we are just as guilty. God moves in here in a mighty way, but we have got God on such a time clock that we fly right by what God has just done. We don't stop and we don't meditate on the goodness of the Lord. Can I tell you today, he's a good, good God. 
You didn't hear me. Uh, I said he's a good, good father. You didn't hear me. Uh, I said he's a good, good Lord. And sometimes uh, we've got to stop everything that is going on around us and we've got to meditate upon the good things of the Lord. You see, there's a domino, a, a, a denominal world church out there that has ruined the word meditate. There's nothing wrong with meditation. Meditation's a good thing when it's done in the right guidelines. But we have been so geared and we have been so focused to move from here to there that we never stop and we never meditate on what God has really done. If they had really thought about who this was, who had just told them to do this, and what he had just done, they wouldn't have been one bit overwhelmed. Now, now let me set the story up. This man had just taken, right, five small loaves. Are you getting the picture? Two small fishes. And he had just fed over 20,000 people. Not only that, there was more left over uh, when everyone was finished uh, than when he began. Whew. Not only that, his disciples uh, had not been focused uh, on the miracle uh, because uh, if they would have been focused uh, on what Jesus had done, uh, they wouldn't have been shocked uh, when they seen Jesus walking on the water. Ah, uh, come on, somebody. They would have expected it. Or they could have taken Jesus' word and believed them and stilled the storm and walked on the water for themselves. That's what the Lord, you see, wanted them to do. In the midst of that storm, the disciples could have stood on the Lord's word to them and said he didn't tell us to go middle ways and then drown. The disciples had already seen Jesus. you got to get this. The disciples had already seen the heavenly father rebuke the wind and the rain. He had already witnessed him cursing the waves and the sea. Right? So look at this. Why? Why could they have drawn on that same experience and used their faith to claim the present storm as they had seen Jesus do before? You might say, but pastor, pastor, you don't understand. This was a really serious, this was a really severe, this was a really big storm, pastor, most people uh, would give the disciples a total pass on this uh, and sympathize with them completely. But, and this is a big but, but they were not the disciples uh, of a mere man. And the instructions they had was to go to the other side. It was not just powerless words. He had what they needed to accomplish Jesus' instructions. Can I tell you today, you have what you need to accomplish what the Lord is speaking to you. Oh, I wish I'd get a witness in this house. You see, they reverted back to being carnal and forgetting all of the supernatural lessons that they had just learned that day. The Sea of Galilee, I believe Jan's been there. The Sea of Galilee is only seven and a half miles wide. 
The Sea of Galilee is little less than 13 miles long. It isn't a big sea. And the disciples' destination was only a few miles away. The disciples boarded the boat and set out from shore sometime around sunset, which could have been anywhere between the 6 o'clock hour and the 8 o'clock hour that evening. Yet, yet, here it was, the fourth watch of the night. It's somewhere between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning when Jesus comes walking unto them. So in 7 to 12 hours, they had only gone around 2 miles. Or what normally would have only taken an hour trip. Listen, most people would say, man, you can't fault them, pastor. Look, the wind and the rain and the waves were really bad. But again, that's because we magnify the physical, the natural thing, instead of doing what God says. It doesn't matter that the rain was falling. It doesn't matter that the wind was blowing. It doesn't matter what was taking place in the elements. Jesus gave the instructions, go to the other side. Mm, Come on, somebody. I'm telling you what Jesus has told this church. This is our day. This is our hour. This is our moment. And I refuse to live in the physical. I refuse to dwell in the natural. I'm going to believe what Jesus says. So when the Lord spoke to the disciples here, he didn't really compliment them and say, now I know some of you because you are so positive. He didn't say, oh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's my fault. He, he, he didn't say, I shouldn't have left you out there in that sea. It's my responsibility. I should have been there and done something. No, a thousand times. That was not the Lord's response. He expected them to do better than they did. He expected them to make it to the other side just as he had instructed them to. Likewise, I believe the Lord expects us to do better than most of us are doing. It's not time for us to walk around in fear. Come on, can I get an amen from somebody? It's not time uh, for us to wring our hands, uh, freaking out over a presidential election, uh, over a pandemic. Uh, This uh, is the day uh, that the Lord has made. Uh, I will, uh, as a child uh, of a living God, uh, rejoice. Come on, somebody, and be glad. I said, and be glad in it. This is my day to shine. This is not the day for me to duck my head. This is not the day for me to duck my tail and run. This is a day for me to square my shoulders back and say, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Is the pandemic real? Well, yes, it's real. Have we had a messed up year? Yes, we've had a messed up year. But I'm going to not operate in fear. I'm not going to walk around with a bottle of hand sanitizer in my hand everywhere I go. I'm not going to walk around fearing that I'm going to get COVID because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Well, pastor, what if you get it tomorrow? Guess what? I'll just get it tomorrow. But I'm not going to live in fear. We have his promises. 
We just don't believe him. We don't believe Hebrews 13 and 5, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. We don't believe that. We believe that when the going gets rough, he's going to bail on us. No, he's not. He said to go to the other side, and that's exactly what he meant, was to go to the other side. Can I tell you today? I'm really not trying to yell. I'm really not trying to be loud, Ange. I, 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 really, I really am not. But I'm going to tell you something. we got to start believing in his promises. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In the midst of a pandemic, I'm not going to leave you. In the midst of a year that's crazy, I'm not walking away from you. Cast your burdens upon me, for I care for thee. You understand what Pastor is saying this morning? Many people identify with the disciples and say, I understand exactly how they felt. It's hard to minister your faith when you're in the midst of the storm. Can I tell you? It's time to activate your faith when you're in the middle of the storm. It's time to square your shoulders back and say, you know what? I'm not going under. I'm not going down. I'm not going to get counted out. This is a day that the Lord has made. It's time to activate your faith. Not just have faith, but walk in faith. It's not going to get easier. It's not going to get better. So what are you going to do? Are you just going to lock yourselves in your house and live behind four walls until the trumpet sounds? Or are you going to be the salt and the light of this world who God told us we are to be? I'm here to tell you today, it's time to go to the other side. Although the Lord understood and has compassion on them, it's not normal. It may be normal according to those who do not believe in God. But to you and I who live a Christian life, it's not normal. We need to recognize and focus on who we serve. Who gave you and I the command? And what he really wants to do. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus didn't send them in the boat so that they would die. Jesus put them in a boat so their faith would come alive, so that they could activate what he's given unto them. Can I tell you today, the storm that you're going through is not to destroy you. It's not to kill you. It's not to do you in. It's to get you on the other side. Come on, saint of God. It's time that we walk in faith. God don't call us to lose battles and to be failures. God made you a world overcomer. You need to start meditating on the promises and on the words of God that he has spoken. Look at what 1 John 5 and 4 says. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is a victory uh, that overcometh the world even our faith can I tell you something today if Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you you are an overcomer mm, I wish I'd get a little bit better response if Jesus Christ is alive inside of your heart, inside of your spirit, I've come to tell you this morning, you're an overcomer. Instead of being overcome by our problems, you would overcome your problems by his promise. Now, if you want to put something on Facebook, why don't you put that right there? When Jesus spoke to his disciples, he didn't tell them to go part your way. He didn't tell them it may be calm out there and you'll make it to the other side. 
But if a storm comes up, guys, I hate it for him. No. He told them to go to the other side. He had a word from the creator. And if he had put absolute faith in that, they could have stood in the face of that storm and defeated it. They could have walked on the water like Jesus did. You see, there are several incidents in the Word of God, in the Gospels, where this same story is talked about. It's Matthew, it's Mark, and then it's John. But John gives us a great insight here. John shows us how important the details are. Look at this. For in John 6, 1, now, now look, then they willingly received him, meaning Jesus, right? They willingly received him, meaning Jesus, into the ship. Now look at this next part. And immediately the ship, would you say immediately? Would you look at your neighbor and say immediately? The ship was at land. Now, now just a few verses they're in the middle of the ocean. They're in the middle of the sea fighting for their lives. Jesus steps on board and the disciples and Jesus are translated two miles to the other side. What a miracle. The boat and all of its inhabitants were instantly transported to the other side where Jesus originally told them to go. It's very possible that if they had stood and believed, maybe this would have happened for them even before Jesus showed up. Can I tell you today, when God commands us to do something, everything in creation has to bow its knees to what Jesus said. You see, I've come to tell you today, there's not a chain too strong that God can't break. There's not a situation that you're going through right now that God can't bring you through. There's not a storm in your life that God can't deliver you from. The problem is we want to just walk with a little bit of faith, and God's saying, I want you to walk in faith. He said, don't walk by sight. He said, walk by faith. Because if you're going to walk by sight, uh, you're going to see the rain, right? You're going to see the wind, right? Oh, you may not see it. You'll feel it, right? we got to get it straight here. You're going to see the waves being boisterous. But Jesus said, we don't walk by sight. Jesus told the disciples, I want you to go to the other side. The word he uses to get them in the boat was he commanded them. He told them, you don't have a choice, you're getting in. He constrained them, the Bible says. In other words, he said, you don't have a choice in this matter. You're getting in this boat and going to the other side. Some of them didn't want to get in the boat because Jesus wasn't getting in the boat. But can I tell you something today? As long as you've got faith, you can make it through anything that life brings your way. And that's what Jesus was trying to show these disciples. He said, I told you, you're going to the other side. It doesn't matter how much it rains. It doesn't matter how hard the wind blows. It doesn't matter the tempest of the sea. Because you're not walking by sight. You're walking by faith. Bobby, the devil wanted you to believe you were going to be in a coffin some years ago. But we said, no, that's not going to happen. You're going to be a grandfather. You're going to see your grandkids. You're going to retire. You're going to live a long life. You want to know why? Because we put faith where faith needed to be put. 
Some of you need to stand up to your storm in your life and you need to say, no, that's not what God meant. God did not mean to destroy me with this. God has meant to bless me. God has meant to increase me. But pastor, this and that and that and this. No, 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 no. I once was an old creature. But when I went into that grave and I took upon his name, I became a new man. The Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. I'm no longer a drug addict. I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer a riotous living. I am a child of the king. And his royal blood flows through me. As we stand this morning, We've got to understand, are we going to listen to doubt? Are we going to listen to fear? Are we going to be afraid of the storm? Or are we going to realize that God said, I can make it to the other side? He didn't tell the disciples there was a storm coming because he wanted their faith to be inactivated. God don't give us the clear vision to everything that he's going to do. You know what God told me to come to Manny? He said, if you'll come to Manny, and I'll bring the multitude of hurting people. He didn't tell me I would lose people. He didn't give me that detail. He said, if you come to Manny, I'll bring you the multitude of hurting people. Look at this house right now. It's pretty full, isn't it? Can I tell you something today? This isn't my church. It's his church. When I want to look through eyes of fear, then I start seeing it in my flesh. But when I walk in here and I look through eyes of faith, there's not an empty seat in the house and we're at two or three services. You see, it's whatever we see by whatever we allow to dawn on our horizon. I refuse to look through eyes of fear. I refuse to allow fear to encamp around about me. You know what? I had somebody very concerned about me call me and said, Pastor, you've got to really take care of yourself in this pandemic. You need to make sure, Pastor, you're isolating yourself. You need to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. And you know what? I appreciated that call. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to live in fear either. Right? I'm not living in fear. I know a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could even think or ask of him. But here's the key. It's according to the power that works within me. What I'm saying is, as long as you want to fuss and cuss and complain and bellyache about the storm, then guess what? He's going to allow you to do it. But he told you to go to the other side. And when he gives you the orders to go to the other side, it don't matter how big the storm is. You're going to the other side. And if the disciples would have simply activated their faith, they would have made it. They didn't need Jesus to come walk on the water. They didn't need Jesus to get in the boat and the boat automatically go to the shore. I don't know about you, I've read that a thousand times. And I never saw it that way as John said. But when Jesus got in the boat, they didn't stay in the middle. They were at the shore. Have you seen that? Maybe you are just smarter cookies than I am. I know you are, Bobby, because you analyze that word. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, that if you'll get Jesus on board, there's nothing in your life that God can't do for you. He never made this walk. Y'all waiting on me? He never made this walk to be a walk that we do by ourselves. He said, join my yoke. Right? That's what he told us. 
He said, cast your burdens upon me. Can I tell you today, there's not a chain that can hold you back if God says you're to be set free. They're getting ready to dim the lights for me right now. And I don't know who I'm talking to. But I'm talking to somebody this morning. It doesn't mean you're backslid. It doesn't mean you're on your way to hell. It just means, God, I need a new fresh touch of faith in my life. I need a new touch of your spirit. I wonder right now as they begin to sing, I wonder if you would step out of your pews right now. And I wonder if you would walk down here to this altar. And I wonder if you would lift your hands and lift your voices unto the Lord and say, God, I know that you're the God of faith. God, I know that you can break anything in my life. God, I know that you're bigger than anything I will ever go through. Come on, this is your hope. This is your promise. God's going to break it for you. Break every chain. Yes, Lord. There is power. There's power. In the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all sing this song. Come on. There is power. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. There is power. Lord that you have given us a measure of faith and God it's up to us to activate that faith I pray today that God we would walk in faith I don't know what tomorrow holds but I know who holds tomorrow I don't know what this week may entail but I know that you've already been there and you've already done it and God I'm asking you right now that God you would allow us as your people that you would allow us as your church to understand you have gone before us and you have fought the battle for us. You do not want us to be overcome, but you said we have overcome the world. And God, you have given us power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. And your word says nothing.
nothing shall by any means hurt us. God, as we walk out of this place today, I pray for your anointing. I pray for your power. I pray for your presence right now. I pray, God, that we would leave here understanding uh, that we don't have to dwell in the storm. Uh, we don't have to allow the storm of life to take us under. Uh, but, God, we have the power to be able to speak it and speak it out of our lives and go to the other side. I thank you for it, Jesus, in your name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the lovely name of Jesus. Why don't you turn around, shake two or three people's hands, hug their neck, let them